We're following two big legal cases this morning. A federal court has ruled against a law that defines marriage as between a man and a woman, likely setting up a showdown at the Supreme Court. In a victory for John Edwards in his corruption trial, Edwards was acquitted of one count of campaign finance fraud. The jury was deadlocked on five other counts. The judge declared a mistrial on those counts, ending the case. Joining us is Anne Marie McAvoy, professor at Fordham Law School and a former federal prosecutor. Anne Marie, good morning to you. Thank you. When you heard the results, what did you think? Were you surprised? Uh, by the John Edwards result? Yes. Not at all. Yeah. Not Why? at all. Um, they just didn't have the evidence to support getting a conviction here. I mean, there they were problems from the beginning because it, you have to prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt. And the more evidence that came out, the more testimony there was, the more doubt it created. So why weren't those jurors, those the, on those five counts, why mm -hmm. were those counts, in, in many cases, declared a mistrial? What happened? Well, they couldn't agree. So there may have been some jurors who actually did feel that he should be convicted. Um, certainly, the testimony showed that he was a despicable character with what he did, especially while his wife was dying of cancer. Um, and you know, he didn't come across as a nice guy in that sense, the things he had done. Um, but the problem was they needed two witnesses in particular. They needed Bunny Mellon and they needed Barron, Fred Barron. One is dead one is over 100 years old. They couldn't bring either of them in and they needed those witness to be, witnesses to be able to explain to the jury he got the money because it was for his campaign, and he knew that we were doing it in a way that wouldn't show up for campaign finance purposes. They couldn't do that. And they, if they had had emails, if they had had some sort of notes, letters, um, voicemail, something that would have shown that John Edwards actually knew that this is how the money was being used and it was done specifically for the campaign purposes as opposed to just hide the kid from his wife, but they just, they didn't have the evidence. Edwards spoke after the trial. This is a look at what he had to say. Take a look. I want to make sure that everyone hears from me and from my voice that while I do not believe I did anything illegal or ever thought I was doing anything illegal, I did an awful, awful lot that was wrong. What's next for John Edwards? Good question. Um, he clearly um, did his mea culpa, kind of accepting responsibility now for his terrible actions, um, and he very much opened the door to going forward, perhaps a political career, perhaps something in the media, perhaps something else, but clearly he said God doesn't seem to be done with him. Um, that maybe there's more that he should be doing. So clearly we have not heard the last from John Edwards. And in terms of another trial, do you see that? No. Um, it's possible. I mean, anything's possible. But they had a, a loss here where most uh, people, I think, you know, certainly uh, a lot of attorneys, the ones that I know, we all said from the very beginning, it didn't look like they had the evidence here. You know, unless they can resurrect Fred Barron and take 30 years off of uh, Bunny Mellon's life and make her younger again so that she can testify, they just don't have the evidence to be able to present to get a conviction here. And the worst thing for the prosecutor would be to go in and lose a second time. Switching gears here, a federal appeals court ruled that the Defense of Marriage Act's denial of federal benefits to married gay couples mm -hmm. is unconstitutional. What does that mean for same-sex couples? Well, uh, right now, um, it means that they may have the chance to get it into the Supreme Court. Uh, the Supreme Court will likely take it now, uh, but we don't know. They don't have to grant certiorari just because you asked them to, but there's a good chance that they will. Um, but right now, it doesn't really change things for them because the First Circuit said that they're not, this isn't going to go into effect until after the Supreme Court rules on it. Anne Marie McAvoy, professor at Fordham Law School and a former federal prosecutor, joining us this morning. Anne Marie, thank you so much. Thank you.